Well, hey, everybody, it's another live with Dr. Jill and my special guest, Sonia Hunt, who I will introduce in just a moment. I'm so excited, as always, to be here today with a friend, colleague, author, and uh, someone who I think you'll really enjoy hearing from today, something very practical that many of you have dealt with, or if you haven't, you might have a child or a loved one who has food allergies. And uh, we're going to dive into that topic. And Sonia is going to share not only the book that she's written, um, absolutely amazing uh, resource for you, but also just the tips and tricks that she's learned along the way. Um, one thing I love is story, uh, because I know that in my own journey, a lot of my own um, education and medicine didn't come from medical school. It came from my own journey through Crohn's and cancer and food allergies like you, Sonia, and mold illness and all these things. So some of my most precious teachings and things come from that experience. And I know Sonia has a lot to share from that perspective as well. Um, before I introduce her, just a little background. You can find me at jillcarnahan.com. There is 10 over 10 years of free blogs and resources there, loads and loads of information, all free. So if you want to find out more about mold or Lyme disease or food allergies or mast cell activation, um, you can find it all on my website. Um, if you need any products or services, drjillhealth.com is where I have my retail store, all kinds of things like histocyst for mast cell activation or um, histamine blocker for DAO and foods, those can all be found at that site. Um, and if you haven't uh, heard any of the lives before, we are going on 90 something episodes and they're all available for you for free um, on iTunes or YouTube or wherever you listen to podcast. So thanks for joining us today. I want to introduce Sonia. She is a food allergy activist, TEDx speaker, best-selling author, and tech marketing executive. She's a mentor to global organizations focused on social impact and creator of 3 to Be, a holistic health and well-being program that guides people on how to be healthy, be safe, and be well to thrive in life. We totally have this in common, Sonia. <laughs> Her first book, uh, Net Job, How I Crushed Food Allergies to Thrive, is a prescriptive memoir detailing her journey to become a food allergy to become food allergy free and an Amazon number one bestseller and number one hot new release. Her life work is at the intersection of humans, health and technology, creating products and services that drive impact for people on the planet. Her platform helps people of color manage and overcome food allergies, and she's a driving uh, conversations on mental health and food allergies. Oh, so, so relevant. She was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, fearless foodie and proud first generation Indian American who currently resides in San Francisco, California. Um, so awesome to have you here and to talk to you, Sonia. Hi, thank you so much. It's so great to see you and I'm so honored to be here. Thank you. You're so welcome. Yeah, I thought your story was so relevant. And I asked you before if it was okay to share that, but we met through a mutual friend who's kind of a business negotiator and he knows everybody. And he's like, you've got to meet Sonia and Sonia, you've got to meet Dr. Jill. And, and so um, you came to me for some care at the beginning. So we kind of met that way, but just have really great, have great respect about what you're doing in the world as an activist and an author and all of this stuff. What I want to do is start back with your story. Like, where did it all start? And uh, you have quite the story. So tell us a little bit about how this all came to be. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I was diagnosed with severe food allergies, environmental allergies, and asthma wow. around the age of three. So the trifecta, I always say that nobody wants. Mm -hmm. And um, we learned, you know, the way that you don't want to learn. I ate something, had an immediate reaction. I'm in anaphylaxis, although, you know, I'm so young, I have no idea what's happening. My parents had never seen that type of a reaction yeah. before. Um, they actually never had even heard the word food allergy before. Uh, they came, you know, they were born and raised in India and came to the States when they went to college. So my siblings and I are first generation Indian American, um, you know, kind of eating Western food. And we just had no idea that inside my body, something was going on. And so it was at another dinner party that my parents had where, you know, a snack, of, you know, came out, try peanut butter and jelly. I'm taking a few bites and boom, it's like hives and anaphylaxis. And, you know, luckily many people at the um, party that my parents knew were physicians and had seen something like this before. So, you know, we were able to get me to the emergency room in time, um, you know, and, and the doctors really saved my life that day. But it started this entire lifelong, like four decades of what I call, like I've lived in inflammation for four decades, right? I know you understand that. Yes. And um, my allergies, my food allergies got more and more as I got older, they got more severe. 
And I've been on the ER table almost dead four times in my lifetime. I've been in the ER hundreds of times for, you know, emergent but non anaphylaxis um, incidents. And in 2008 was when I had my latest, I should say, you know, anaphylaxis incident. And it was the worst, worst one that I have ever had. And um, I, when I let finally, you know, was, was released from the ER that day for a full one year of my life after that night, I had hives all over my body. Wow. So the toxicity, right? Yeah. Can you even imagine yeah. like having huge welts all yeah. over your body for an entire year? And I went through like every possible emotion, you know, again, that, that you could go through. And that's when I really said to myself, you know, whatever you're doing apparently is wrong because yeah. here we are again. <laughs> and, you know, I just need to now um, get to the root of why this is happening, what's really happening. And I want to have a North Star to age healthily while getting rid of these, yeah. you know, and that was in 2008. And so, you know, for you fast forward a decade after that, um, I really worked on all areas of my life, um, physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional, holistic health. And during that process as well, I was introduced to you. And I, you know, together we started to have conversations around gut health. Yeah. Is there a relationship with food allergies? What does that mean? And not only have I learned so much from you, but you're such an integral part in my health transformation, which culminated in, you know, learning in 2020 for the first time that my food allergies were gone. Yeah. And okay, you know, we just have to like pause here because this is <laughs> not really clarified for people listening. We deal with a lot of IgG food sensitivities that can be present that can cause delayed reactions like achiness or headache or brain fog um, or even rashes, but it's delayed. It's rarely, if ever anaphylactic, it's not supposed to be anaphylactic. We're talking about true IgE. We're talking about the classical, like people can die from this. And you clearly were close to that several times. And I just want our listeners to know there's a difference. I treat both. Um, but what we're talking about is actually true in blue. And like you said, childhood, now some people outgrow them. You clearly didn't and got worse. But that's one reason why I wanted to have you on is because I think a lot of people, just like for me, they think Crohn's is incurable, right? And I am cured. And just like for you, they think, oh, food allergies are forever. There's no, there's no cure. There's nothing that you can do about it. And that's why I'm so excited to have you on today because you have really reversed this and made a change. And we can talk about the deep dive of some of the things you did to do that. But this is something that most people have been told or have heard that is lifelong, irreversible. Some people grow out of it, but there's not like any control that we have over it. Right. And right. we're saying that's not true. That's not true. Even, even I felt all my life, right. Because I was always told what's true today, right? We don't know the exact cause of food allergies and there is no cure. Yes. So when you've heard that since you're three, you're just like, okay, there is no cure. So I have to either learn how to live with this and, you know, incidents do happen, right? And so it was, my whole life was only focused on my physical body mm -hmm. and making sure that it could withstand another attack. I yes. never looked at holistic health, yes. never. Yes. So, so go back to that first, before we talk about the, the solutions, and I, I would just like to know like one or two, or even just one experience. I can't imagine as a child, like this really, because it's, you can't breathe. Your lips are swelling, your body's rushing out. How did that feel? And do you remember any specific incident of time when you were taken to the yard? Like you had to be terrified. Oh yeah. I mean, probably one of, you know, the most mortified times was in college. I was in lecture. I was walking to lecture and uh, one of my college roommates, you know, was like, take a banana with you. We got to finish them, you know? And so I took a banana, I ate it on the way. And by the time I got to class, my throat was like closing up and I hardly had any air, yeah. but I'm in 300 person lecture oh. at 8am in the morning. And of course there's like the cute guy sitting in front of me as well. <laughs> so <laughs> right. I was like totally mortified. And I got up and went to the water fountain, tried to like have some water and it just wasn't happening. Um, and I think like I was already turning blue and somebody was like, oh my God, she's like, something's happening. We need to call 911. And I was rushed off to the yeah. emergency room. Um, and it was so, it was embarrassing. 
Yeah. I was never allergic to bananas before right. that. Right. That was incredibly scary to learn that any random food that I might try mm -hmm. or I've eaten before could all of a sudden have this reaction. Oh, because yeah, you're, this is something new. It's not like a, there was, a, and then like you said, to be in a large, and I'm just thinking like myself as you're telling it, just being with that many people alone is is kind of like, there's a little claustrophobia and then to have like, I yeah. can't breathe. There's like so many layers oh like in there. I can't imagine. <laughs> um, wow. So so then from the, that was college and this is actually the last decade and a few years that you really started to reverse it. When was the first point where you thought, what if there was something different or you first had the thought that you were going to maybe go down a different path to look for answers? Yeah. So that was in 2008, you know, that emergent situation. I was in the hospital for about three days. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was like, you know, having all these conversations with the universe lying there. And I was like, you know, I, in my book, I write that I was making a deal. And I was like, you know, if I can get out of this ER, you know, safely, then I'm going to change everything, like very dramatic, right? Like yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna change everything <laughs> and you see, you know, watch. Yeah. And it was almost as if, you know, the universe was like, okay, you know, let's, you know, you can get out of here. Um, but just to make sure you're going to make good on this, we're going to give you hives for one year and see what oh. you do. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh. I mean, now I look back on all of that and I'm just like, oh my gosh. But, but that was really the time where I felt like, how could I be here again? And it was so, um, it just like broke me down across like all areas of my world that I was like, I refuse to be in this position again. Mm -hmm. And there was some fire like in my soul that I was like, you know, I will figure this out. I will write the, you know, find the right people who believe that I can figure this out, who will help me on this journey we will get to the bottom of it. And I saw it as my life's work, Yes. right? Because who knows if it would happen, who knows when it would happen. And so in 2010, after like I'd healed from all that anaphylaxis and I started to really just um, put my story out there and, and tell people like, cause I hid it my whole life. I never used to talk to people about all of this. I was super embarrassed and shameful. Um, but in 2010, I just said, I'm just going for it. and. Um, it was a process of a decade to get to where I am now. Yeah. And it was a lot of testing and tweaking many, many different things. Um, but there's so much learning that happened. So I love, cause what I hear in you is the thing I hear in any patient who's successful at overcoming illness. And I've been there as well. Number one is there is a deep fire within. I will figure this out somehow. A yeah. des almost a desperation, right? Like we're yeah. I was there too. I remember with cancer and Crohn's and mold, every time I got to the pit of despair and like, there's no hope. Um, I remember that feeling of like, no, there's this like fire inside. I'm going to figure this out. And then yeah. again, any patient knows they might visit five, 10, 20 doctors and get wrong, either no answers or get put off until they really find it. So you do need a lot of persistence and a lot of belief that you can, that you actually have. So I wanted, if you're talking to you out there, no matter what you're dealing with, what kind of illness, you can figure it out. And just, I believe that just that desire alone, that prayer to God, the universe, wherever you're at um, in the hospital, I've been there too, that ignites the people and the resources to start to open up for us. So it's actually that first little instinct or inkling that we maybe have hope and that maybe we can figure it out and that we start to shift towards i'm going to do whatever i can to figure it out that opens the doors for people resources and things that we need to come across our path or for us to seek them out um and even like you and i meeting or all the other yeah. people helped you in your journey um i feel like that desire really starts the process and so again i want to just encourage you if you're listening and feeling hopeless about any situation you can overcome you can overcome anything but it starts with that desire and that will to survive. I always think of it as almost the stubbornness. I got, I've got a German Swiss heritage and they're kind of like stubborn stoic. <laughs> and I don't always like that at all. Like, but the truth is a piece of that, that creates this fire and drive. And you obviously have that too. <laughs> yeah, no. And I'm so glad that it came out, right? Because mm -hmm. it was like dormant yes. for all my life. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, that fire came out and, and I just almost like immediately said to myself, you know, I can do this. I will yes. do this. Like, I truly will figure it out. And, and I, you know, taking that pressure off of like, 
this is a goal and seeing it as my life's work yeah. became like, it took a lot of pressure off because I tend to also like add all these things to my plate. And then I'm like, oh God, I got to do this now. And I was like, I don't know if this can happen, but we're going to give it our best shot. And I won't stop until I figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. And hives, um, I didn't have a year, but when I started doing mold treatment, I did detox binders and I had hives for at least two or three months head to toe. So I also rel I relate to that in a little <laughs> fraction of what it was horrible. Like you horrible. Know, so, so get it. So, so from there, from in the hospital bed to obviously an author and, and being passionate about this and actually really healing yourself. Where did the journey start? And, and tell us a little bit about that journey and the levels of yeah. what you and so, you know, I have an amazing allergist that I've been with a long time out here on the West Coast. And uh, I kind of ran this by him, you know, and I said, like, how do you feel? Because I, I wanted, you know, him and his team to be on board with all of this. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, and I love, you know, that team so much because they've always said to me, our, you know, goal is not for you to continue to eliminate foods from your diet. We want you to eat everything that you can. So, you know, um, yes, like this is great. Like you're taking ownership of your health, mm -hmm. right? And we wanna be on this journey with you. And then also talking, you know, to my parents, um, I was on, as you can imagine, my entire life, so much Western medication, right? right. And I remember a conversation with my mom saying, uh, especially when I left the ER that day, I mean, I left with like a duffel bag full of pills. Yeah. And, you know, soon thereafter, I went back to work, even with all my hives, and yeah. I was still taking all this medication. So I just felt very, you know, foggy. And, you, and again, the things that if I gave you antihistamines, multiple yes. kinds and steroids, yes. I'm assuming to calm them. So everything that those kinds of medications, they calm, they put a wet blanket on an immune system, but they don't say why immune system are you being overactive? They just like shut up. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it's all about suppression, yeah. right? So yeah. here I was like suppressing and I said, like, you know, to my mom, is there some healthier way mm -hmm. where I can maybe take different kind of medication that's not making me feel this way? And that's where coming from India, you know, we started talking about Ayurvedic medicine okay. and, um, you know, we, we pulled into this, you know, support team, as I call it, of doctors an Ayurvedic MD mm -hmm. who also started to get involved with my situation, mm -hmm. with the food I'm eating, how I'm exercising, wow. what I'm putting onto my body, ran a lot of testing, what medication am I taking? And, you know, in, in Indian Ayurvedic medicine, you know, they do believe that in situations like this, there's just a ton of fire and toxicity yeah. that's in your body that's trying to get out, which is why it manifests as hives on your body. And so some of it is like, you've got to let all of that come out yeah. before you start to heal it, which is not what I wanted to do. Right, but, right. you know, for the first time I had to say, okay, we're going to trust some people coming into this process. We ran everything by kind of both sides of the house, the Western, the Eastern, and we started down a plan. And, and eventually that's how I got to functional medicine as well. And you know, because there was always this question in my head about the state of my gut health yeah. and is something going on that's causing or exacerbating my allergies. Um, and so uh, those were like some real starting points for me um, to start, I call it, you know, expanding my awareness to other forms of healing, because there are so many other ways, you know, to, to heal um, my allergies. Mm. So I want to hear yeah. more about some of the things you found and just from functional perspective, from my perspective, someone like you coming in, we, I always think of toxic load as a bucket. So we all have like a bucket we're born with, or that we have a capacity for, and depending on genetics and environment and how we were raised and the foods we're eating and the air we're breathing. Um, sometimes our bucket has a lot of margin and we do pretty well. And we all have some toxic load. That's, I mean, our bodies are created to detoxify. So to me, it's like, you can't get rid of toxins, but you can number one, minimize exposure. And I always say simple things like clean air, clean water, clean food, like go back to the basics. And literally 80% of our toxic load is from the air we breathe. So just getting air filtration or kind of clean air sources or clean food or clean water can be very, very much a part of the solution. But that toxic load, as it starts to fill up and over flow, one of the things that can manifest is sensitivities, allergies, hives, this basically it's like our system that was created to defend us against invaders and bad things starts to turn on us and react to things that are normal every day, like peanuts or whatever. Um, so 
to me, that's a sign of an overactive immune system. And then we say, well, root cause, is there an infection? Is there a um, dysbiosis of the gut, meaning abnormal microbes that are putting out excessive toxins? Or is there other toxic exposure? Mold can be a trigger for some people, but something in you or anyone who suffered from this has triggered their immune system to be a little bit irritable, like overreactive. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And we, when we worked together, you know, in the beginning, we started looking at all of this, even like, you know, is there mold exposure in my home and things like, you know, getting an air filter. Right. Um, those are things, again, like the focus with food allergies for me was always just on the food. Yes. So I had all these other things that I wasn't even considering. And even with the food as part of this process that I went through, I, it was almost like I learned to eat again, right? Mm -hmm. Because in the testing, you know, that I've done over the years, we started to get a real understanding of my genetic predispositions from the family. And, you know, in the extended family, you've got type two diabetes, there's, you know, thyroid issues, there's all kinds of, you know, food related issues, mm -hmm. so that I wasn't even considering. So it wasn't just eating foods that were safe. It was is the food that I'm eating that is safe for my allergies actually good for my body? Or is it causing an issue somewhere else in my body? And a lot of that was going on. So I really like my first, first step, you know, even that I have in the book was all around changing mindset around all of this. Cause I just had to get my head in a different place. That because that's yeah. I, go real, go kind of go to where someone's listening to like my son, my daughter, my friend, myself have allergies. How do I change my mindset? Give us some of your- yeah. Yeah. So, so what works for me, and I talk about this in the book, you know, I started off by defining and I'm big on like journaling or whiteboarding or yellow stickies, right? Like whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. And I just drew like, what does a healthy Sonia Hunt look like Love today? It. What is that? You know, is she, is she, you know, skinny? Is she, you know, um, have clear skin? Like, what does that actually look like? And then what does she look like 20 years from now? How is she aging, right? So I literally started drawing this out and thinking about it. And I went very, very like deep into, you know, just like I was saying, like, you know, uh, weight and skin and function. Like I always grew up with seeing um, older folks have that pillbox. Yes. The Sunday <laughs> Monday, you know what I mean? I call it the old lady pillbox. So and I was like, God forbid that I would have the old lady the old pillbox, lady but, you know? Because it'd be full of like allergic medications, you know, allergy medications. So I, these are things that I wrote down and I was like, here's what I want and here's what I don't want. Right. And, and of course, like we all like have stuff as we get older and all of that, but I just knew that I didn't want to be on medication all my life. You know, I knew that I wanted to, um, you know, not deal with other things that would be difficult for me to get rid of, like. Yeah. you know, all of a sudden, because I was eating really badly, like gaining a ton of weight. Yeah. So I kind of strategized this all out and defined it for myself. Um, and that was kind of like one big piece. The other big piece is I did a ton of research on stories of people who have completely transformed their health. Wow. And there are, oh my God, so many amazing people out there that similar to me, they had something that was going on and they, you know, just put a stake in the ground and said, I'm going to do this. And I started to read these inspirational stories and how did they do it? Um, I started to visualize and put together like literal yellow stickies on my mirror in my bathroom of what I wanted to achieve in all of this. And there were like little reminders to every time I went down, I would go into that room and I would look at that sticky and I would just boom, you know, it was like a click, yes. I called it. So there were a whole series of these little steps I call micro steps that on a daily basis, I started to change behavior. Mm -hmm. And every time I was like, no, I'm tired. Or I don't want to do that. I would go back and look at like that vision board and say, but here's where I'm trying to get to. So, you know, it, it was like a series of all of this for the mind to get the mind also in a healthy space and in a growth mindset. Cause I think for a long time I was in more of a victim mindset. Yeah. Mo you know, so many people who've been in, I mean, cause truly our system creates victims and there's nothing wrong. I'm not shaming yeah. anyone cause I've been there too. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's so easy to be like, oh my gosh, I have, even for me, I've realized there's a lot of people who've had cancer and they kind of live as I'm a cancer survivor. I rarely say that. 
because in my mind, it's like gone and passed. And I got, yeah, I don't even like, there's times literally Sonia where like, oh yeah, I I had cancer. And it almost is like, it's almost like another life or another person. It's so not associated with me because I've never identified with like, and again, I'm proud that I'm a cancer survivor and I don't mind talking about it, but I don't identify with it because that's right that we can get stuck in and then we lose the growth. I love talking mindset. I love that you're sharing these really practical tips because I also can relate to, I remember uh, right after my divorce, a really low point in my life. And I started just walking and meditating and I, I wanted to come up with some sort of kind of a mantra that would just help me remember the things that I wanted to put forefront and the vision of that, well, who I saw myself to be in 10 or 20 years like you. Yeah. And this it may sound silly to you listening, but I literally every day would say, um, every day in every way, I'm stronger and healthier, wealthier and more resilient, younger and more beautiful. I will overcome all obstacles. I will outlast all adversity. Things are turning in my favor. And for three years, probably every day, multiple times. Oh my God. I said that. And I literally had like little quotes in scripture to go with yep. one. So there's a longer version that includes all, and I can say it outright. Yeah. But it would literally like when I, and, and it was some of this work on NLP and subconscious mindset and growth mindset and all these things. And what I remember learning, which is what we're both saying is our subconscious mind is really kind of just takes orders. Like it's, it's just an order taker. It's very simple. And anything that our subconscious believes it will bring to pass. That's all it knows how to do. So usually it's our subconscious that thinks we're sick or we'll never get well, that sabotages our wellness, but if yeah. we can program our subconscious through repetition, reminders, through dreams, yep. through meditation, through prayer, we can actually reprogram it to believe. And for me, there's no doubt in my mind, I believe stronger, healthier, wealthier, more resilient, younger, more beautiful. And the funny thing is at the end, that more beautiful, I was ashamed of even saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's so vain. Like I want to honestly, like I was like, I do. I want to grow old and be, and it's not like um, yeah. I just want to be a fake plastic. I just want to yes. be more vibrant and healthy as I age. Yes. And, that's exactly yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm, like, I'm gonna throw that one in too. <laughs> And even my ex-husband the other day, he asked me, he's like, Jill, did you get plastic surgery? And I've never done anything <laughs> like that, right? But I'm like, do I look younger than I used to? He's like, yeah, you do. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I mean, I yeah. the, the transformation on my skin yeah. from, yeah. you know, all of this has been unbelievable, right? Agreed. Even even my friends ask me like, what you're doing something, yes. right? And I'm like, yeah, I actually, for the first time, have true joy in my soul. And that was even joy with allergies. Like I found joy in allergies. I never knew if my allergies would go away. Right. And so, so, so grateful and lucky that, you know, to go into remission, but, you know, I just had to find purpose in it and I was without purpose. And that's why that mindset piece, like the meditation, the visualization manifest, I'm so with you, all of that I did. And I just said to myself, like, there's no amount of juju that I will not do. If it's good juju, like, what is it? Tell me what it is. Like, and I would go ask and interview people, you know, who I was inspired by. Mm -hmm. And I would say, what are you doing? You know, like, I'm trying to transform my health. What are you doing? And I'd write down like all these, like this person is doing this. I'm going to try it. And again, it's like every day doing these little, little steps. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel burdensome, but I could feel all this weight coming off of me and especially off of my, the worry off my head. Yeah. And then I was able to make, start making conscious decisions. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, this is, I, I don't think <laughs> we're going to go deep into this, but this is making me so happy because I so relate. And I also think people need to know, I take supplements, I exercise, I do the things that we need to do to be healthy, but this piece right here has the most power Yeah, it sets you up for everything else. And what you mentioned about joy, I remember right after my diagnosis of breast cancer, not knowing if I was going to live or die and having that same feeling of like the purpose that I had, the mission that I had, I didn't know the outcome. And now I know. So it's easy to look back just like both of us. We can look back like we're healed. But I remember in the moment, like literally not knowing if I had six months or six years or less and still knowing there was purpose and joy in that time. Yeah. I think that's so important too, because right now is a tough time for, we were just talking before, like life is crazy. If you're listening out there and if you haven't had a crisis, it's coming because life is crazy. <laughs> and I'm so sorry to say that, but like the truth is we just had fires in our community. Many thousands of people lost their homes. And before that, like I, my 17 year old puppy died and like just things that are mm-hmm. tough and I'm okay, but it's like, life is hard right now. And yeah, out there listening is there's a lot and we expect COVID to be over and it's not. And so, yeah, but it's relevant because 
it's still okay to find joy today, like in the midst of your hardship. Absolutely. From right now, like this is where you find the joy. This is where you find it. You find it in the pit because if you can find it there, you can find it anywhere and it will take yeah. and take you where you want to go. <laughs> Absolutely. And that incident in 2008 was my pit. Mm-hmm. And I just said, no more, no yeah. more. And, you know, and put together all these things, you know, holistically that I wanted to do. So some of it was mindset, you know, mm-hmm. some of it was like creating a support team of different type of people. You know, we talk about expanding awareness to other forms of healing, functional medicine, and, you know, uh, Ayurvedic medicine. You know, I learned there's a chapter in my book called cooking consciously, yeah. right? Finally, your conscious like brain is turned on and I'm really thinking about uh, my overall health, um, health about the planet. Um, and one of the biggest things in this whole process was also, you know, there is a voice inside me. I always suppressed it just like my allergies. And I finally said, it needs to come out the true, you know, the real me, uh, my true self needs to come out and tell people that I'm struggling with this. I need help at times, you know, here's what's happening. And that just ended up learning how to advocate for myself. And then, you know, as I call it, humanizing allergies, which is helping others out there like yours, you know, like we're going through this, that really set me free in all of this. And all of these things like that I document in my book, it all led to remission. It wasn't like one thing did it. It was doing all of this stuff over a long period of time and consistently um, that led to it. Love it. So mindset, conscious cooking, um, asking for help, being authentic, trusting your intuition. What about practical things? Like again, you and I talk about gut health or supplements and you don't have to go deep, but what were some of the practical things from, from just the physical functional perspective that, or, um, Ayurvedic were, uh, that, that felt like they were helpful, were there specific herbs or protocols, or maybe just a little bit of overview of that for you? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I will say that probably all my life, I've also been taking the wrong supplements. <laughs> oh yeah. Right? Some, so some of them, so we have like two sides of our immune system, TH1, TH2, and there's actually TH17 and Treg and all kinds of things in between. And now with COVID people know immune system cytokines, but what you just said, I'll just emphasize, you can take, like for me, I know I'm so, TH1 dominant. So if I take astragalus or certain herbs, they actually make me worse. So I think that's what you're saying is certain things yeah. activate that and make you more, yeah. um, your immune system may be more aggressive. Is that what you're Absolutely. And so when we discovered, right, leaky gut, yes. um, you know, in my situation, it was like, okay, like a, a one a day vitamin wasn't going to help yes. that, right? So it was coming, you know, with, with, you know, your lead, figuring out what are the right set of supplements to start to heal that. Um, and then also, because I'm thinking about genetic predispositions, I'm thinking about type two diabetes, you know, I'm thinking about as I get older, you know, what are other things I might have to deal with? Um, the supplement piece and completely overhauling that again with your lead has been like tremendous. And I think also like a lot of what you see on my skin as well, like shining mm-hmm. has led to that because in the past it was just like, like taking a one, a one a day and it might work for, you know, other people. But I think for me, like everyone's body is so unique. Um, you know, with Ayurveda, they had different kind of herbs, but also a big part of Ayurveda was the food that I was eating, the times where I was eating, right, the amounts of food that I was eating. And then there's all kinds of other practices to release toxins, which some of them include massage and who doesn't love that as well, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, so these were areas that I never spent time on before, because I was always just focused on don't eat things with nuts in it. Yeah. where I started to now open my mind and this concept of bioindividuality, right. And, and personal medicine, that's essentially, you know, what we've done now. And, and I'm not actually taking any medicines. It's all herbal supplements. It's all things that are great for me. Um, and, you know, I will, I think always keep Epi Benadryl on hand just in case something ever ends up happening. And I really believe in those tools. They've saved my life many times in emergent situations, but I really moved down the path of holistic, you know, products. And um, so even if it's the food that I eat that is farm to table, that's grown from a local market, that's as much as a supplement is having joy in my life as a supplement, love in my life, right? And, and all of it come together to me. I look at all of them as supplements, not even necessarily 
just say an herbal supplement I might put into my body. Oh, that's great. Cause so true. And I love that you said so many people, um, you know, they're this one a day multi, and I would say 90%, maybe 80% of my patients, that's not the right thing because either you shouldn't have copper and iron and molybdenum or, you know, some, <laughs> something in there you shouldn't have. Or I find like with B vitamins is a perfect example. I take my Bs separately. Like I take a very high dose of B1 and B2, and then I don't take much of this one and more of this one. So I actually very much um, do that for personalized, like you said, for different people, because we all need different and some people need a much higher dose of one or two of those things and you can't get it in a multi. So right. It, Right. And prebiotics and probiotics were huge for me as well. Yeah. Diet. We'll just talk briefly about that because often what happens, people think a toxic load is external. We said clean air, clean water, clean food. That's absolutely true. What people don't realize is a lot of the toxicity can come from inside if your gut is uh, leaky or if you have dysbiosis. So say you have overgrowth of bacteria or fungi or something in your gut, those things will produce toxins from the inside out and they can also contribute to toxic load. So what you said and what I've done too in my life is to really deal with that leaky gut and that toxic load from within um, through either antimicrobial herbs or uh, probiotics or prebiotics or things to kind of get that balance back. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else of any other chapters in your book that we're missing as far as key, we've really hit on a lot of high points. Is there anything else that we didn't talk about? That's been part of that. That's really significant. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, I, I kind of, so this three to be program to me was like, Think of it as uh, themes in your life, right? Mantra, be healthy, be safe, and be well in all aspects of your life, right? Again, because now I was thinking holistically. So in be healthy, there's like three steps. It starts off with, you know, changing mindset, um, you know, finding a, a support teams, finding right support teams. Then to be safe, there's, you know, three steps and be well. And so two of those steps, right? The, the be healthy and be safe, those are really focused on like inward work, yeah. right? really figuring out what's going on, really trying to get to root cause, um, having the right support system, starting to think about things differently. And then when you go through all of that, the be well, which is prosperity, was taking it all into the world and letting your true self shine, you know, helping others. Um, so I built this, I never wanted to build it because I'm not a medical professional. So I didn't wanna say, if you do one plus two, you're gonna have three. I built it purposefully as embed these themes into your life and you absolutely will get healthier because we have a ton of research that shows yeah. what meditation does, right? What uh, cooking consciously like will do for you, et cetera. So I really love that, you know, I feel like in the allergy space, there's, there's really nothing like that, right? It's kind of embedding these themes into your life and, and um, your holistic health will start to get, uh, you know, get to get stronger. And, and cleaner. And, um, you know, the hope is always that you'll be able to own your allergy situation, right? Have your North Star like I did, um, but really be at it every day so that you can transform your health in many ways. Mm, love it. Love that. Because it's so applicable, really. So you could read this book if you had any number of illnesses and still Absolutely. a lot of really important information. That's what's so uh, powerful and amazing. Um, love your story. Love what you've shared. Love that we went to kind of the mind, body and some of the foundation. And one of the things that I think is probably most important is the purpose thing. The really like when you were there in the ER and, and it turned out to like internalize and become a purpose. And if you're listening out there and struggling with help, if you can find some sort of meaning or purpose in the suffering and transform. And then, like you said, you've taken it out into the world. And when, yeah. you, when you do that, it, it changes everything. It really, really does because it's more than just like a chore every day when you get up to, oh, I have to do this. Oh my gosh, I must. Whenever you hear should, must, or have to, you know, you're probably on the right, wrong track. Yeah. Because <laughs> it comes from, not that there's a hard days, but it should, it should come from more of a, place of like the joy the like I get to I get to take care of myself I get to do this to change my body and change the world and I hear you saying that yeah absolutely and and one of those tools that I always had um it was a food allergy card and I it basically like I got rid of my business card and I just used that and that was a starting point to meet all these new friends that I have even in the restaurant industry and chefs and you know, cause I would just say, you know, I would love to eat here. Here's what I'm dealing with. Can you feed me? Yeah. And then it became like this amazing conversation of like, oh my God, my mom has this allergy or my son has this allergy or I'm dealing with this. So these are all just tools, right? Where you can 
not only you're in a place now where you own, you know, what's going on with you, um, but you're taking it out into the world, um, you know, to help other people as well. And, and that starts to lift that burden as well of what you're living with every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that last thing that you basically what you're saying is when we are authentic and, and you alluded to it earlier, it's hard because I think we are set up to put on a mask. Everything's great. I'm fine. How are you? Fine. Right. But it's kind of like taking off that mask and saying, I'm struggling with this. Can you help me? I'm suffering. Absolutely. And it doesn't mean, again, for me growing up, it was like needy was not good. So I didn't, yeah. need, right? So I had to relearn how to ask for help or how to say, you know, I'm suffering here. Can you help me and share and be okay with it? And that's part of the journey too, because we need, and in fact, if anything has transformed us during this pandemic, we need community. We need yes. people. isolation is another disease. It so. truly is. It truly is. So um, yeah, yeah. I hope that. Um, you know, this, these small tips, you know, and, and I think they're really easy to start on every day. There's, you know, it's not like you have to put a gazillion dollars into any of this, right? You right. can literally start with mindset change today after this Facebook live. <laughs> I love it. So where can people find you? Where can they get a copy of your book? Tell us more about how to get in contact with you. Yeah. So soniahunt.com, S-O-N-I-A-H-U-N-T. Uh, that's where you'll find all my links to, you know, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And um, my book is sold on Amazon, on Barnes and Noble. It's in some local bookstores as well. So that's really exciting. Um, and I read every single email that comes through. So if you have any questions or if you just want to chat, you know, send me an email. I'd love to, to talk to you. And yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, we're, we're, we have a newsletter as well that you can subscribe to that goes out monthly. And there's a lot of great information on allergies, on holistic healing products. I find recipes that I give out things like that. Cause I'm awesome. a big foodie. <laughs> I love it. I will include all of your links, wherever you're listening to this, look below and you will see the links or out in the chat, whatever, we will make sure and include those. Um, Sonia, it's such a pleasure to see your Thank journey you. With you. and to even been a little tiny part of it. I'm just honored. Um, to oh, I'm so grateful. <laughs> yeah. And, and to see where you're going and just the a wonderful book that you've written for people. And thank you today for your bits of wisdom. And I love this because I never really know what to expect. I kind of let it flow, but I love where we went with mindset and with some of these yeah. deep issues because truly they have as much or more power than any supplement or um, pill or medication. Yeah, no, thank you so much. I'm so grateful. And, and truly, you've been such a big part of this uh, journey for me. And you have uh, words of wisdom in my book. So for <laughs> anyone who's going to buy my book, you can actually read uh, Dr. Jill's words of wisdom that are in the book as well. Thank you, Sonia. What yes. a treat. Um, I sure appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you.